Sippers, welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, your dad's sacred boyfriend, Shane Todd. Before we start, and I always say, in fact, Dan always says, oh, Mike, put yourself on, like, give, give Mike a mic, and then Mike forgets to give himself a mic. But let me ask you this question, which you don't even need to answer. Have you seen food before? Because I bought him a tray bake, okay? I went down the centre and got him a tray bake, and you'd think he is... A 40-year crack addict just getting the biggest hit of his life. I've never seen someone eat something as enthusiastically. He's eating it with a big smile. He's trying to be all quiet. And he has a root. But he's enjoying it. And we enjoy we enjoy snacks of all kind on uh, on the Tea With Me podcast. So, guys, it's, it's Friday. It's Friday. We don't know what's going to happen with the executive... They're making an executive announcement. I think it's too late to say I don't know what an executive is. I don't know what the executive is. Is it the government? Is it all people in the government? Or is it just some of them? Who gets to be in the executive? I don't know. But um, I don't know. I mean, stand-up could stand up could be... We could be back on. We could be back in business. Because over the last couple of weeks, we have not been in business. We have not been in business, but... I don't know if we if we get an update during the podcast, uh, Mike. Just tell me. Uh, but you take your time with that tray bake. Jesus, Christ. I mean, it's hard to watch. Incredible. It's incredible. I mean, you can. Do you know you can? You, anyone can buy those in the shop. It's huge. Yeah, it is huge. I mean, it's bigger than I thought. And then I mugged myself off because, well, I mugged myself off through this way primarily. I have, for some unknown reason. A tar mark on my head. Well, I don't have it anymore. <laughs> but up until up until five minutes ago, I had what can be described as a cartoon tar mark on my head. Like I was a body in wacky races that have been. Yeah, I'm Dick Dastardly. <laughs> I'm Dick Dastardly. And by the way, please make a note that that's the name of this this week's podcast. Um, so I I don't know how you know when like you know when you have toilet paper on your shoe under your shoe and you're like oh no how long's that been there. When you have a cartoon tire marker on your head, you want to know how long it's been there because here's the thing. Mike told me about it when he arrived and went, "You have you been run over by the Ant Hill mob because you have tire marks in your head? And I didn't know, obviously, that I had tire marks in my head. But then when he told me that, I meant to rub it off, but I didn't. And then I just went out into the town centre of Hollywood and just did various things. I went into Centra. I had a proper, like business conversation with the guy who works in the building too about electric and I'm all like yes mate no what's a crack with a meter and he's looking at me being like what's happened to you in the last hour <laughs> why have you survived a Peugeot 206 running directly over your forehead it's not I mean it's not even just like a slight mark it was a perfect it was a perfect diagonal mark across my head and the thing is, yeah, I just, I mean, it looks like I've done Ash Ash Wednesday, but even more aggressively than any, it looks like I've done Ash Wednesday in a rush, like I didn't even have time for the priest to do the wee squiggle, I was just like, I need to get out of here, I've got things to do and people to see. So yeah, that's probably, you know, done, done a lot of damage to my street cred in Hollywood, which already probably was not that, was not very high. I hate it when things like that, like, like whenever you have a wee bogey, and then you see it and you're like, oh no. Who saw that? You know, or you know, or your flies down. People, people don't. The older you get, people don't alert you that your fly is down. You know that used to be a big thing in school. People go, insert name of the football team you support. Man United are bottom of the league, and you go, we're not. We're top. We're going to do the treble, and then you go, ah, my flies down. You know, uh, but but now it's like it's like a, almost a. It's almost a taboo thing because to acknowledge that someone's fly is down is to acknowledge that you have been looking at their penile area, at their genital area. Uh, whereas in school, you 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 could do you could definitely do that. You know, it was it was fine because everybody was weird in school. Honestly, the best reaction I've ever got to a joke was in school, in primary school during PE. I was wearing these black, I was wearing these black shorts. And we were sitting like cross legged in the PE hall before PE or something, I don't know. And uh and I was making a daisy chain with the girls and whatever way my shorts had washed, it looked like there was loads of grey hairs coming out of where my let's say childhood penis would have been. Uh around that area and uh and 
and one of the girls in my class or somebody made reference to it. I was like, what the fuck's that? And I, I honestly, I must have been seven or eight years old. I said, I've started early. And honestly, never before has anything got a reaction because people lost their minds. What made it so much funnier is the fact that they were grey. So the joke was almost that not only had, had I got puberty, but they, they were now grey. And that, like, floored people. That absolutely floored people. And the janitor loved it. He's like, well, let me see it on. <laughs> what are you doing? You know, in his house. But, um, yeah, I mean, whenever you, um, whenever you made a joke in school... You used to, oh, you all right? He, this is so undignified, I swear you. There, there are, and I think everyone will know what I mean, there are Asian businessmen that would pay money to, to stream you eating the tray bake. <laughs> the most disgusting yet sexual thing I've ever seen in my life. Sorry. It's so, I think the fact that it's pink as well and you've got, like, your face is a bit pink now and you're sweating and... Oh my god, it's just really, really hard to watch. But at the, but and I'm also hard to watch it. Um, yeah, primary school. I um, I was in the school, <laughs> I was in the school choir, and I used to mime. So that's just a little bit of, little bit of trivia about me. Here's the thing: in the audition for the Strandtown Primary School School Choir, I knocked out. Of the, I just felt inspired that day, and I knocked it out of the park. I think, it, and also it's like X Factor because you, you had to just go in with a song of your choice. And I sang Amazing Grace, and that is that is true. That, that's just true. You know, um, obviously a very um, inspirational, a very culture-defining song being sung by a six-year-old boy from Hollywood. Amazing. And then I joined the choir and realised that actually I was just inspired that day but I couldn't sing and our choir entered loads of competitions and every time I was miming. I never sang. Um, there's, a lot of one, there's a lot I want to talk about on the episode this week but before we really launch into it let me plug Patreon. Not Let me plug our Patreon not just Patreon as a site although I will plug Patreon as a site it's a good idea. Patreon.com slash Tea With Me Podcast You get we all like it when we get extra things, but we're not entitled, so we can't just expect extra things for free. We get this podcast, you get the Wednesday podcast, but on patreon.com slash tea with me podcast, you get a bonus podcast that I do every Monday with Dan. Um, and sometimes they're like as long as these ones. Sometimes they're, they're more bite size, but they're very fun podcast. And listen, on the one just past there, I talk a lot about censorship and I think it was definitely enjoyable to listen. And it was certainly one that I texted Dan after we recorded and said, should we release that podcast? And he said, yes. So I, that might that might whet your whistle. Um, also, we do a live episode once a month. We just did one with Dave Elliott, Kieran Bartlett, and then interviewed a load of sippers as well. And, um, and we'll be doing those once a month. And the next one is going to be in a week and a half, two weeks' time. And I'll release a lineup for that. So that that's only for sippers. They uh, get to watch that live and I get to see them on Zoom. And a lot of times they forget I can see them and they do a lot of unchristian things. Let me just say that. Patreon.com slash T with me podcast. You want to support the podcast, you can do that there. Um I want to crack into this. I I fulfilled a little bit of a a little bit of an ambition, a little bit of a a, a curiosity dream which was I commentated on an actual football match this week as one of my alter egos, Keith Cruz. And it was a lot of fun. By the way, I got us tea, but I think I remembered that at the tire mark on my forehead. So I forgot to put milk in the tea. So this is black tea. I like black coffee. Black tea is horrendous. That's real. Uh, that's not good. It's not good. It's just... Tea is, milk makes tea. Milk really does make tea. I, like, we love tea, but it, it would be nothing without milk. It's a little bit like um, Anton Deck. Phenomenal presenting Jew by themselves would be abysmal, I think. I don't know. Um, But, yeah, so I, 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 I wanted to commentate in a football match for a long time, just because I love football since I st when I studied journalism. 
I uh, always thought wanted to get into sport journalism. That was something I thought maybe I could do. So um, Porter Down Football Club said, I put out a tweet. They said, yes, you know, would like to get you up, commentate on a game. I um, I, I missed three calls since we started doing the podcast. That's the most calls I've ever received in a day. Um, Porter Down said, yes, come up, commentate in the game for their club live stream. They were playing Linfield. And when they announced it, some people were raging. And that, to me, was very funny. Like, they announced it, and then all these guys, a lot of, like, more Linfield fans than Portadown fans were like, I'll not be listening now, and this is an utter disgrace and madness. And I was like, guys, we are in the middle of an epidemic, pandemic, systemic storm. And I don't think in the grand scheme of things, me doing commentary as Keith Cruz would be in the top thousand worst things that have happened this year. In the top 2,000, yes, but not the top thousand. You didn't need to get that annoyed about it. And people were getting really annoyed. And this guy put up one of my favourite tweets ever, which, and by the way, I won't I won't really interact with someone if their profile picture is a football badge or a footballer and just isn't them because I don't know who I'm talking to. And this guy put up a tweet Someone under it was like, brilliant mate, looking forward to it. And then this guy under it wrote, I won't be watching and I heard a few that aren't. I heard a few that, a few others that won't be. And the fellow who initially was like, great mate, went, went, you serious? And the guy wrote, I know of at least four others who will not be tuning in. <laughs> As if me or Porter Down Football Club would at that stage go, this is a fucking shitstorm. There's four boys here, all called Jordy, <laughs> not listening. Um, but yeah, people were really annoyed about it. Part of me gets it because I'm like, you might just want to watch a football match. You're not getting to go to the game. Do you really want to hear a fella talking about hitting big boofters, talking about blasters, shouting he doesn't want it? And that is what it was, you know, because a lot of people were like, he's not going to take it seriously. And I was like, yeah, it'd be so weird if I commentated as Keith Cruz, I was just providing genuine analysis. Like, that'd be so, that'd be way worse. I was like, let me just have a bit of a laugh with it. And I commentated with a guy called Davey Wiggins. And um, he he was he was brilliant. So he did the, like, proper commentating. And then I was just sort of talking shit on the side. And it was exhilarating. Because I was getting to actually go to a game, like, watch a game for the first time in so long. And I don't get to go to Irish League matches because I, I still play, for, I still have so much to offer playing-wise at club level, so I never get to watch an Irish League game. All in all, it was class, although you're like in the stand, with it, so it's socially distanced, but you're in the stand with everybody else, so there's people like a row in front of you, and you're doing the commentary, and there was like five old boys in front of us who were just loving it, and then they started giving the referee loads of abuse, and I just find, I find that so funny. Like, it'd be so quiet, and one of the fellas would be like, go ahead, referee, you fucking mug, and I'm like, this guy's 88, and he's having the best day of his life. Like I, like, I thought at some point you might lose that. You might lose that, you know, caring so much about, you know, football or whatever. But it turns out you don't. And it was class. I mean, I'll be honest. On the microphone, if you listen, you heard that I was looking to get chips the whole game. I'm making jokes about it as Keith Cruz on the microphone. I'm like, where's the nearest chippy and all? And do we get chips? But in reality, that I mean, it was very clear I wanted chips and they weren't provided. So that was, that was really the only downside. But it was great. And then... Halfway through, this guy comes up to me, and I'm on, the, I'm on the microphone, and this guy comes up, lovely guy who must be involved in the club, and he hands me a plastic bag of like a goodie bag, basically for coming to coming to put it down to do it, and obviously I didn't, you know, charge him my usual fifteen grand, but the guy just gave me a plastic bag, and it was like the put it down away shirt, a face mask, like a put it down face mask, a bobble hat, a pen, and something else, and he handed me it as I'm commentating, but I was Keith Cruz, and I was like. Should I say, mate, thanks for that and all. And then I was like, but he's done a nice thing, so I want to be genuine back. And I tried to turn my microphone down, but I didn't. So halfway through, I'm like, Keith Cruz and all. I'm like, oh, that was a shit tackle and all. And then the guy hands me the thing. And then you just hear me very genuinely go, thanks, mate, appreciate it. And then I'm back into Keith Cruz. I don't know if anyone picked up on that, but it was brilliant. It was really good. And after the game, listen, it was divisive. It divided people. Some people are like, never do that again. That was the worst. Some people were like, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me, mate. And I've been kneecapped seven times. But I enjoyed it and some people enjoyed it. So 
It was good. I think I'm going to do ones for Glen Avon Football Club and Warren Point, and then I'm going to hang up my microphone from commentary. But yeah, it was good. It was really good because you kind of get into it, although there was times where it was like, to be fair, stuff is happening in the match, and I was just telling a long anecdote as Keith Cruz, but I enjoyed it, and I, I appreciate them having me up. Um, I want to talk a wee bit about the, the vaccine. You know, news has come out in the last couple of days that there's there's maybe going to be a vaccine. They're, they're talking about bringing it in, like, before Christmas. And, Mike, you look really... You heard, you've heard about this? Have you? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, and, you know, they're saying all these big pharmaceutical companies have come up with it really fast and they've trialled it on a lot of people. Um, my attitude towards it, like, the big debate in any WhatsApp group I'm in is, would you get it? Would you get it? And um, I think my answer to it is, yeah, I probably would because... There's some people saying do get it and some people that say don't. And the no like I could be don't get me wrong, I could be totally wrong. They could go this this vaccine actually isn't safe and they could never release it publicly. But the people saying do take it are mostly like Oxford scientists and top people that work in labs. And the people that say don't take it are like my cousin's mates from Hillsborough who don't work in top scientific centres, but they work in retail. And, like, I get that some vaccines in the past or whatever might have been, thought, you know, but they're probably, like, probably in Northern Ireland, there's people who do, like, chip vaccines and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, counterfeit vaccines. Vaccines that fell off the back of a van, so those ones wouldn't be good. But it's just funny that, like, even the suggestion of a vaccine is, is surely like a good thing for like a lot, especially like elderly people and stuff. But when that, I mean, you want to talk about a red rag to a bull, whenever the likes of Belfast Live or the Telegraph release that story, everybody, there's a, there's a vaccine. That is when some people see that and just like crack their knuckles and they're like, love, clear my diary. I've got to get to work here. Because some of the comments I've seen, and I'm going to read some of them, I haven't looked at these really beforehand, we'll just look through the comments feed and read out the best ones, but like, some people are offering, offering their opinions, just need to take even two minutes, and if you still want to post it, post it, but I don't I just think it's funny that they're like, yeah, there could be a vaccine for this thing that has caused so much disruption and death in the world, and some people are like, you won't catch me taking it, I'll stick the, my tried and tested cure if I get it, which is, Lem sip and I'm a wank. <laughs> Here's the thing. All you need to do is pull a wire off yourself and drink plenty of Ribena and you'll be sweet. And the reason I know that is because my, my mate Desi drives a van. So I would know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to get... I'm, like... I'm going to guess, like, Big Pharma, whatever you call these companies... Yeah, I'm going to guess there is, like, evil there. I'm going to guess these are billion-dollar, multi-billion-dollar um, money-making machines that, that I think they care about more, more... I think they care more about money than, like, you know, everyday people getting access to these things 100%. So, so I don't think these companies who come up with this stuff are essentially uh, knights in shining armour. I don't think they're, like... They're doing this because they just care so much. Obviously, some of them will, and there will be an element of that. But I definitely think a lot of it is cash driven. So they're like, yeah, we've got this vaccine. I'll probably wait till it gets tested on more people. But at the same time, as an influencer, I have been working with Pfizer. Is that what they're called? Pfizer? A big company. I've been working with Pfizer. So if you use the discount code SIPPER, you will get 20% off and free shipping on your vaccine. So do check that out. Um, when you're getting your vaccine, just an Instagram live video of you, and I want you to just say "Take Me Podcast Sent Me." Um, I don't know. Let's get in. Let's get into some. Let's get into some comments about this. Because the com. Let's face it. The comment section is the new Saturday Night TV, and we're not looking for like measured opinions in the comment section. We're looking for the most mad opinions that we can find. 
and uh, this this brings it all out. Um, okay, hang on. Right, so yeah, so the new executive announcement's about to come out, so that's kind of dominating the news. But yesterday... Yes, okay, here we go. So the headline of this is, new vaccine more than 90% effective against COVID, say Pfizer. Um, comments. Michelle straight away goes, uh, fine for those with underlying health conditions who wish to take it. I rely on my immune system, thanks. I mean, you don't need to be sassy towards the vaccine because the vaccine isn't even a person, you know what I mean? I think I just stick to my immune system, if that's all right. Um, <laughs> um, I love it also. What's funny with a real divisive negative comment is when someone comes in with just a straight up genuine comment. Like, when someone just feels the need to be like, listen, let me just fire this in. When someone like Linda goes, a bit of positive news, let's hope the further tests go well. <laughs> like, it almost doesn't need said. It almost doesn't need said, but Linda's like, no, let me just throw my weight behind this. Um. Okay, hang on. But Andy goes, brilliant, the vaccine that's 90% ready and not tested, but sure, hold your arm out. <laughs> uh Phil, Philip, I don't know, I think Philip might be someone who, you know, is a bit sceptical towards the vaccine because he says, stick it where the sun doesn't shine, I'll take my chances. I mean, most people will get it in the arm, but Philip's basically saying he wants it rectally. Stick it where the sun doesn't shine, so he's in there, like, taking no chances. Pants and trousers down, he's bent over, and he's like, listen, I know you normally do this into the veins in the arm, but do me a favour and whack this right up my bum, because I'm not taking any chances. Uh, <laughs> it's... <laughs> um, right, he, right, so... Th this person follows the theme of, like, anytime anyone takes a picture of themselves up at Stormont, or takes a picture of Stormont when they're out for a Sunday walk, this is said in the same tone as the people who comment to that and always go, oh, you could you, you could do a better job, Garth. You know, yeah, whoever puts a poster, a uh, picture up of themselves at Stormont, always their friends are under it being like, say they're called Brian, you go, Brian, see when you're up there, see if you can be First Minister. you do a better job, mate. David goes, I suggest that all MPs and MLAs take a first dose, let it sit for several months and see how good it is. I can see them kicking the door in to join the queue. Clown emoji. Love it when you finish up with that. It's like a punch and it's like, hey, poof. Clown emoji. Um, wow, I mean... The people that made the app didn't... Uh, Paul says, I'll take my chances with COVID-19. Uh, Paul, judge by your profile picture, you're 95 years old, so don't take your... Please, Paul, whatever you do, do not take your chances. Uh, oh, shit. Janine, bit of insider info here. So it's nothing to do with the 150 billion Pfizer gets for making it before the end of 2020. And then this emoji. So, a little bit sceptical. Um, Dorothy would approach this with caution. As if they're as if as if they're not as if they're gonna read this and go, oh maybe we should test this, you know like Dorothy's like listen, do me a favor, make sure you're as safe as you possibly can. Dorothy's the sort of person who goes who goes uh, listen, do me a favor, when you're going out for a night out, just mind yourself. Okay, I will mind myself because I wasn't gonna mind myself. Uh. Sherry doesn't trust it. Um, where's the proper testing for these vaccines? Seems like they're just pumping them out for no pumping them out. Not good. It takes years to get a proper vaccine, right? I mean, yeah, but at the end of the day, it is happening now. You know what I mean? So, it is happening now. So if they get it now, then that's surely good. Michael, I always said they'd get a vaccine when Trump lost. Sixteen likes. Uh. 
Oh, oh, for fuck's sake. What is going on in here? Happening, people? Right, let me just interrupt the podcast. Well, someone has interrupted the podcast. Hey, man, I'm just coming and see you. Dave Elliott. No. Can I hug you? No, socially distanced. I'm glad to see you're wearing a mask. Yeah. What, what What are you doing? Do you want a mic? What? No, I don't know. I'm just here. Yeah, you're just here. We. This is my podcast. Yeah, we don't do... You're here do for Boy Town. We don't do... Do we do, not do this together? Huh? No, we don't, but... Fuck. <laughs> I genuinely didn't know Dave was coming. Get a mic. Get a mic. Where's you, the mics? The, there's one that there's a stand get the stand next door and your mic's here I genuinely didn't know this was um, this was happening by the way get the band back together no <laughs> no, no we're not getting the, the band, band no the band back no together. I need this I need this I can't stay at home by myself anymore oh man Listen, I know you took it hard that we stopped doing boy time, but is Mike, is this going to be okay for frame if I move over? Absolutely not, but sure. Absolutely not, but we'll make it work. Hey, I'm only staying for one minute. I just had to come back and say, bring it back. No. I need this. No. I need all probation. No. <laughs> no. I need a hand. I need taking that to the dump. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> Guys, I miss you too, Mike. <laughs> I miss my listeners. No. Guys, please. No, you're not Have supposed to back. be here. No. <laughs> no, no, no. It's please. okay. No, no, no. <laughs> Why are you so please. sweaty? Please. I'm so desperate. I'm desperate. Are, Fuck. You, are you okay? No. <laughs> Why are you here? I don't even know. Um, yeah, so, uh, back to, <laughs> Dave, I genuinely don't, I genuinely don't know why he was here. He doesn't even live in this town. He doesn't even live in this town, but it was good to see him because since we stopped doing Boy Town, that's the first time, first time I've seen Dave Elliott. Um, we'll wrap up the vaccine comments any, anyway, I probably should have looked and picked out the best ones because that, that was just a bit rambly, but that's just what a, what a podcast is. Uh, Dave Elliott there, flip. Uh, guy is not doing well. I mean, to be fair, obviously we still share, I don't know if people know this, we still share a studio. That might explain why there was a pillow and blanket here when we got here. And toothbrush and stuff. I think he's living... Hankies. And Hankies, yeah. And you, you know what he was using those for. Uh, I, I think... Willie Tears. I think he... Um, <laughs> I th- <laughs> The saddest country song of all time. <laughs> Willie Tears. <laughs> My wife left me, and since then I've been crying willy tears. Um, yeah, I mean, what I would like is people to reach out to Dave Elliott because he needs it, and I won't be doing it. We haven't spoken since Boytown Podcast ended. We share this studio, but uh, Mike's kind of the middleman and makes sure I'm not here when Dave's here and vice versa. But, uh, Jesus, that was tough to see. Um, I, with, with this executive announcement today, I don't know what the crack with stand-up is. I'm hoping that, and I'm hoping we can announce this. Hope everything works well, but I would, I, I hope that we can do a run of shows in December, a bit like the last Limelight shows I did, socially distanced, all done properly. Uh, I'm really hoping that would happen. That would, ca- that, that would be class because the last couple of weeks, um, it's just been tough with like n- no gigs and no real sign of gigs. You know, I get the idea behind the circuit breaker. It's so tough on hospitality and stuff. But um, but if we know that, like, okay, we're d- done, and then it's going to be a bit more normal, that would be good. But like, it's just been shit with like not no gigs, and then not being able to even plan gigs. But hopefully, there's some sort of there's some sort of news on that. Um, I'm gonna do that. My battery's about to die on the laptop, so I'm gonna do listeners' questions. Uh, so yeah, we've got loads of listeners' questions. Um, I can address the state of the place. Yes, mother. Um, I can. So, uh, we're... I mentioned the podcast not that long ago. We're renovating. We're spring cleaning. Dave has a wall in this room, which is great. It's perfect. It's the old boy town wall, so it's already painted. He's got a sign. He's fine and dandy, apart from having a breakdown there. This is my wall, but we have the design for it, but we're a week or two away from actually getting the wall finished and then we're going to have a sign and we're going to have shelves and it's going to it's going to be glorious I've got a new chair this isn't it but I've got a new chair I built I built this table today and hey that all comes from Patreon money um, so yeah that's why the wall is kind of like this can you see the way Hollywood's in? 
Okay, cool. Uh, I mean, it's quite sad to put that up, isn't it? Because it's like, it'd be better to just have a blank wall. Uh, but yeah, w- the studio will be, it will be something pretty soon. Mark Beatty gets uh, this Twitter. First of all, Mark Beatty says, who's better at commentary, Keith Cruz or Martin Tyler? Uh, yeah, Mark was the guy that arranged me going up to Portadown to, to, to do the match. Um, I, I messaged him like the day before and I said, mate, there's some people like saying they're not going to be tuning in. They're unsubscribing for this game. I was like, do you want me to like step aside and not do it? Because at the end of the day, I don't want you to actually lose out on money or whatever. And he goes, trust me. And I thought he was going to be like, trust me, mate, you're brilliant at this. It's going to be great. He goes, trust me, the amount of people we'll lose, I'd say we'll get some people additionally. So we'll make up for all those people we're going to lose. And I was like, okay. And went up and Mark and his team, are, by the way, all those guys that do that, I, I always talk about the Irish League, all the people that do that, all volunteers, like they're like media team, they're streaming the game, uh, they're running the social media accounts, I think all that kind of, I mean, there's like four or five of them, more maybe, and uh, it's just class to see, all absolute gentlemen, so uh, so who's a better com- commentator, Keith Cruz or Martin Tyler? Cruzy. 100%. Like, Martin Tyler's never gonna never gonna ask his co-commentator who he thinks the sexiest player in the Irish League is. Simple as that. Matthew McClarty. Do you reckon Keith Cruz has a shot of co-commentary for the Champions League final or even bigger Northern Ireland's match this week? Um, I think I can understand why people might go, nah, it would get slightly irritating because it's 90 minutes of Cruzy. Uh, and people are only used to like a minute and a half at a time of cruisy. Uh, but I'd be willing to take the call up. There is like a thing of people doing their own commentary, like comedy commentary on football matches and sports things and all that. So I don't know, maybe I would do that at some point. Alex McGreevy, how did you vote in the US election and are you still legally dead? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the th- the thing I find quite funny about it is like Trump has obviously gone on these huge rants in capital letters on Twitter, and he's like, oh, they're illegally voting and all this kind of thing. And listen, I don't know that they're not. I don't have a clue. I don't know if they're not or if anything's been tampered with. I don't have a clue. But I think some Trump supporters are doing videos that I've seen a few of where they're like, caught on, caught red-handed, stroked, look at this. And in one I saw, there was this guy dumping mail-in ballots in this box all for Biden. And they go up to the guy and they're like, so are they, what, what are you doing here? And he's like, oh, just putting these votes in and all. He's like, they're all for Biden. And on the side of the guy's car, there is a Chinese logo. As if he's like working for the Chinese government. But it was like duct tape, it was an A4 page duct taped on. And I think if you're going to do that kind of thing, like do it well. Hire actors, do it right. Because... I, saw, I don't know if I talked about it in the last... I, I think I did, talked about it in the podcast earlier in the week. Somebody I know very well shared a picture of George Clooney and Barack Obama on a speedboat from, I don't know, years ago when they were, like, I don't know, hanging out. And it, it there was a photoshopped young Asian girl in the boat with them in this picture, but they hadn't cropped around her head properly. It's like something I would make on Microsoft Paint. And this I know this person who is intelligent and is like... Dirty bastards. And I'm like, who's the dirty bastard in this in this case? Who is the dirty bastard here that's like, what about this thought, you know? Um, I just think, how are these, these guys not getting better Photoshop type people? Like, why is like Mike here not getting the call up for, you know, far right or far left people to be like, listen, can you edit, uh, you know, can you edit Lady Gaga into this thing where, you know, skulls are being eaten? You do you do a worse job? No, you do a great job at that. Yeah. You actually do a lot of that in spare time. My wife, email. Yeah, my, hello at right. Um But yeah, I mean, I, ju- I just... Uh, David Blevins on the podcast earlier in the week, who's a journalist, a very good one. And and I was like... I j- he, he was basically saying, everyone's a journalist now, everyone's a news outlet. And he's like, but take two minutes and look at what you're writing or sending out and just think, can I back this up? Do I stand over this? And stuff like bad Photoshop. I mean, Jesus Christ. Um, Clive Gilmore says, why are the backing singers on Motown records so negative? 
I love Motown and I don't really get I don't really get the reference. Why are but uh, Clive, give me more info on that and we'll I'll talk about it next week because I like Motown and you might be onto something there, but I don't know what it is. Jamie McEvitt, are you a butter and jam on Toastman or just one or the other? If jam was if jam, what flavour? P.S. Hope you enjoy the Neon Osman joke. Well, yes, I did. Because I'm looking for a neon sign for the podcast background. I put out a tweet saying, do I know anyone that does neon signs? And Jamie McEvitt tagged his mate and referred to his mate as Neon Osman. And that's, rhyme and sl- that, that's a rhyme with Leon Osman. It's a pun. Leon Osman used to play for Everton. And I really enjoyed the niche nature of that. Really, really enjoyed it. Because I'm sure there's more famous Leons. Not that I can think of, but um, yeah, I enjoyed that 10 out of 10. But am I a butter and jam on Toastman or just one or the other? Let me flip the script. I am a jam and honey on Toastman. Because what I do is I get my little gluten-free toast. I put a spread of jam over it. Usually raspberry, seedless. I prefer, but I can take seeds. And then... I pour a little bit of honey on top of that. Jam and honey, good combo. After the gym, bro, you know what I mean? Uh, Triple Denim Disaster says, "Great, no such thing. Greeting, Shento. I believe we all have some OCD to some degree. I've been crossing roads before and felt that weird feeling of having to get across before a car even sees me. <laughs> Never mind gets near me. Do you have any odd phobias like this? Um... Yeah, I mean, that is that definitely is like an OCD one, but I'd, I'm, I'd say there's a lot of people who do that, who are like, I need to not see a car in the distance before I cross. You know, I'm a um, thrill seeker when it comes to crossing roads. Like, sometimes I'll do it, and I'm like, oh. Because here's the thing, I'll never run. I'll never run across a road, because what if I trip on my lace and break my neck and then get run over by a car? So... You know, that's it. Th- and I always make sure I'm in laces tied because if, it, if you don't, you'll break your neck. Um, but crossing a road, yeah, I can understand. Like, I, I'm i trying to think if I have, a, have any OCD type things with driving. Um, yeah, I mean, the obvious one would be the temperature in the car has to be an even number. You know, like 20, deg- 20 degrees or 18 or whatever. Um, but apart from that, not really. I mean, that is a, that is a, that is a weird one. <laughs> Sean says do you remember going into tech in the mornings in your wee blue 206 with a ball of, with a, a ball of jam bonds for, from Spar um, a ball of jam bonds um, that's John Hughes my man John Hughes who used to go to tech with uh, do you remember going to tech in my blue 206 yes but the sad thing is the 206 was the better of the cars I went to tech in because before well no, that's not true. So I used to have a silver Corsa when I started going to tech, and John, I'm sure you were in that. Um, and my so the Corsa was the first car I owned, and it cost two hundred and fifty quid. My first car, my Corsa, cost hundred and fifty quid, one liter flying machine. As my dad would say, it goes like shit off a shovel, and. Uh, I remember like when I when we were in Castle Ray Tech and I had that car. I also remember, sorry, John was the one that told me that my car got broken into. We used to park at the bottom of the falls and one day he came in the class and went, your car, your car got broken into, your windows bust. And I was like, ha ha. And then got back and realised it was and there was a note from the police. Genuinely, my car got broken into and they didn't take, like they didn't take anything, they didn't do any damage inside it because they must have regret it you know they must have broke the window and then we're like this guy drives a one litre Corsa that clearly has a street value of seven pounds it's not like he's going to have a Rolex in the car so um and for too long I just like had cardboard on the window oh it was so bad um but then I had a 206 that get ready for this my dad did some sort of deal and I got that car for 50 quid 50 quid and uh it was a 206 and I had a class sunroof. It was the video Michael we shot MC Beezer changes with. Uh, and I loved that car. But my door got fucked basically. And the door opened and buckled back into itself. So the whole side of it was dented. So that car was class until that happened. And then that was a bad look for a long time. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I, I used to love that. Because like, like, even just having a car, you felt like the man. You know what I mean? Like, you know, when you, when you think back to getting the bus, a lot of bad things about that. It might be raining, you're sitting on the bus with other people, you might not get a good seat. And also, when you're a young guy on the bus... You're going like the vibrations of the bus meant that five days out of five, you were, let's just say, on the bus, you were, hmm, you were sans route, if that makes sense. You know, and that, and that was an awkward because you, then you're like, I hope this goes down before I get off the bus. Um, and I hope that it, that wasn't just me because if that was just me, that happened too. Then, uh, then that that is weird. But I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it was. In fact, it wasn't because it was a guy on the bus who used to always get my attention and go look, and show me his. Um, uh, and it's weird to get the bus with your uncle. But um, I wouldn't have said John had a ball of jambons from from spot. I wasn't. I'm, I've never really been a jambon guy. I don't like. Um, I don't like jambons because you don't know how much meat is inside a jambon until you bite into it. You know, and sometimes you get let down, and sometimes there's too much in it. So I would more have been a sausage roll bap kind of guy, iced finger, coconut finger. If you're feeling particularly, let's just say not heteros, like not a hundred percent heterosexual that day. You know, because the the ice finger is the dup of baked goods, but the coconut finger. That's it. That's a party of club tropicana, you know. Mark begs with the apocalypse imminent. If you had one last wish before you visit the pipeworks in the sky, what would it be? Hashtag good morning. <laughs> uh, the pipeworks in the sky. Oh yes, I mean that that used to be my Friday night back in the day was go to Sky Nightclub and then finish with a nightcap in the pipeworks. Um, with the apocalypse, what would my last wish be? Um, not to have a tire mark on my head. Is it? Mm. Fuck. Is it like... Is, is it like I've touched something and then I've touched my head? Yeah, and then you tried to clean it and made it worse. Oh, no. Is it noticeable on the podcast, do you think? <gasps> do you know what I did? Oh, fuck, I just did my hair the other way. Uh, <laughs> this has been a terrible day. What would I do with the podcast? What would be my last wish? That I didn't look like a fucking cartoon villain. You know? <laughs> Um, Rory Organs <laughs> Would you rather be blind or deaf? I mean Insensitive But um, would, I rather, would I rather be blind or deaf? Probably deaf Because I watch a lot of European crime dramas that are subtitled So For the R that that's on I, I'm I'm okay because I'm still getting to see it. Whereas if I was blind, I wouldn't get to see my reflection again. So, ideally, neither. If there was an option for that, uh, Phil Nesbitt, if an island went on sale on the coast of Ireland, you were able to buy it and declare it as your own country. What would you call it, and what would what would some of the laws be? Uh, yeah, I would buy it. Um, I would call it. I would call it Pipeworks Island and it would retain a lot of the etiquette from the the business formerly known as the Pipeworks. Um so let's just say it would it would be let's just say if you're coming over, C U M, I wouldn't bring the family. All uh, adult at all bits, do you ever potter around in a shed? Um, no. No. Uh, oh, fuck, that's a horrendous question about pedophiles. Um, not that one, but another one that I saw there. Um, do you ever potter about in the shed? No, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a potter. I don't think I ever will be. I potter about in shops, definitely. You know, in, in like, uh, you know, JD Sports or whatever, I can potter around for a while. But not in it, not in it. If I'm in a shed, I know what I'm there for. And then I'm out. I'm in and out. Like a fiddler's elbow. Mark wants to see a mockumentary starring myself and Dave as the Spanish singers. I mean, yes. Yeah, that would be incredibly enjoyable. 
the Spanish singers trying to get a record deal in Northern Ireland or just like the Spanish singers rocking up to working men's clubs in Northern Ireland singing the Penny Arcade in, in, in Spanish. Still next door, Is he, I don't know. Why was he here? Because he didn't leave anything off or... Fuck, I don't know. Is he... Do you want me to see if he's here? Uh, let me just message Dave Elliott and say, are you still here? Uh, yeah, the Spanish singers singing like Sweet Caroline in like the Con Club on the Newton Arts Road. Enjoyable. Especially if it was like hidden camera just to see the reaction we would get. Ryan Bell, who's better looking me or Andy Waterworth? I mean, it's close contest when I don't have uh, oil on my head. But when I have oil on my head, it's Andy for sure. Uh, ordinarily, probably Andy Waterworth. Best looking player in the Irish League, 100%. Um, Ali Campbell was that a wee Cliftonville number you had on in the gym also is Aaron Butler homoerotic um, two very different questions there was it a Cl- I was wearing a Cliftonville t-shirt in the gym earlier yes I'm trying to get a little bit of apparel from all Irish league clubs and I'm about halfway there and I have a Cliftonville training t-shirt so yes I was wearing that is Aaron Butler homoerotic I mean let, well, let me let me look up the dictionary definition of homoerotic. Well, that's weird. I just typed in homoerotic and a picture of Aaron has popped up. Um, homoerotic, tending to engage or arouse sexual interest or imply an erotic connection by one man for another. Yes. Yeah, Aaron, yeah, Aaron Butler is, is homoerotic. Because uh, homoerotic and homosexual seem like different things. Um... But I can, I I can't I don't know if he's homosexual or not. But is I've never asked him. But homo is he homoerotic? Yes. Does he engage or arouse sexual interest from one man to another? Yes. And that man is me. So yes, one hundred percent. Um. But we'd have to, we'd have to get him on the pod again to to really dig dig to really dig deep. Owen Kelly, how the fuck is it only Tuesday? Um. Good question. Dave, early, earlier I posted up a picture asking for questions and his microphone was in shot and he just wrote to me to say, to say do not use that microphone. Maybe that's why he came down, just to make sure we weren't using his microphone. What a fucking psycho. He's not here. Um, okay. Jason says, would today's kids be able to cope with the level of banter and raking that was handed out in school? No. No. I mean... Because it was not just verbal, it was physical. Like, we used to play this, like, game. I say game in school. We had this really shiny floor, wooden floor, in it, in the assembly hall. And people would walk through there to go to lessons. And I remember for about six months, if you saw someone you knew, that's terrible. You would literally go to Borstal for this now. You used to just sprint, and then with two feet, slide tackle the person onto the st- hard wooden floor. And if your hands were in your pockets, it, like that for me, that was the line. If someone had their hands in their pockets, I would never do it. But if your hands were out of your pockets, you were going feet over head. Definitely. Arse over head. Definitely. Um, that was horrendous. If that happened now, geez, kids would like be off school for a year to cope with the, with the fucking trauma of that. Some of the verbal stuff um, was, was horrific. I am going to assume that that still happens in in school, but maybe it was more uh, and not acceptable. There was an acceptable level of it back in the day. I mean, you would get ri- some days you were going to school and just get rinsed by your mates. Sometimes you were handing it out, and I think that I think there is definitely a difference between that. I hope there's a difference between that and bullying. Um, but like if you did something wrong in school, like if you wore like the wrong thing, you're fucked. You're so fucked. Um, but usually it was in a good way. Um, would kids now be able to cope with that level of banter and raking that was handed out? I mean, I think what we've realised now with hindsight is that it wasn't banter and raking, it was just assault and abuse, is what it was. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's probably good though in a way that there is more stuff like, listen, the idea of safe spaces, I still don't really know a lot about that. But it probably is, it, it, I mean, it can only be a good thing. And you can be, like, whenever I see stuff like a uni is banned clapping because it can be, what was the reason for that? Because uh, 
Do you remember this Manchester University band like clapping as a way to react to stuff because it could offend? Autism, maybe it was an autistic thing. I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure, right? But that is different than the idea of having a space where people can go if they're feeling like anxious or and and, and people can go anxiety. We didn't have anxiety back in my day. Yes, we did. We just didn't have a name for it. We just didn't have a name for it. You know, like people would definitely like fucking feel pressure. People would panic and stuff. But it was just. But, like, back in the day, it was just, like, people would say just being weird. And now there is, like, a proper term for it, and they kind of sort it out better. Um, So, like, it, it does all sound, like, alien to me, like, safe spaces, like, this this thing and that. But, th- but then I'm not in school now, so I don't know. But that's just their reality. But back in the day, like, there's probably pros and cons to it, but, it, like, school was more of a war zone, I would say. Uh... Aaron's asked me something I gotta go and verify before I look at it. Um on Wikipedia. Hang on now. Uh yeah, on, on the on um Wikipedia it says that I was arrested for drunken disorderly behaviour and was fined a hundred and eighty pounds at Belfast Magistrate Courts. Um, if you listen to or watch the um, podcast, you will probably know that on a list of people who would be drunk and disorderly, I'd be very, very low on that list because I don't really drink and I'm not disorderly. So um, I don't know. It's kind of fun to have that out there. And people, if they see that and believe it, might go, I wonder what it was for, what the circumstances are. So I'm okay with that. Uh, but apologies to say, weirdly, that entry on Wikipedia is not true. So I, I was not arrested for drunk and disorderly. Um, I, I bribed officials and got away with it. Lee Mitchell says Northern Ireland match. Talk about that. Uh, yeah, big match on Thursday night. Um, I think Northern Ireland will win. I think they'll do it. And hopefully we can just go to the Euros. Jay McGee says, where's Mike? Um... I am also Mike. Mike McGoldrick is a fictional character, so he is in in a way here. Um, I will be doing more McGoldrick stuff soon. I just haven't thought about exactly what I'm going to do. Owen Campbell, ever do a show in Derry? Owen, I've done many shows in Derry, mate, and I dare say I will do many shows in Derry again. Uh, hopefully the tour is going to be all properly rescheduled and Derry will, of course, be on it. Ocean Crossan says, w- were you... Why are you not Nima Celebrity this year, Toddy? Uh, I'm not Nima Celebrity for about 44 reasons. And the main one is they weren't having it in Australia this year. They're having it in Wales. And I was like, guys, no. If I'm going, I want to get a tan. Um, no, I, I don't like the idea of doing reality TV. And also, if I went down, I'm a celebrity. There would probably be seven and a half million tweets of people saying, I get all these celebrity guests, but who is this? weird looking young old guy that's also one people be like who is this guy or girl in either their late teens or early 40s that's walking about saying to people you know yourself warren mercer um what uh oh okay so that that's that's not about uh that's not a podcast question that's just something that we were chatting about on the phone uh about some about some business, so so that's unrelated to everything. I ignore that I've said that. Matthew Hewitt says, "Hey Jamie, yeah, hey Jamie, do you too?" Uh, for everyone, anybody who doesn't know, I asked a lot of people to do the podcast, send them Instagram messages, including Snoop Dogg, but I copied and pasted the message from Jamie Fox, so I said to Snoop Dogg, "Hey Jamie," and I I think he didn't get back to me because I disrespected him and called him Jamie. And if he ever does get back to me, he's like, "I'd love to do the podcast. Why'd you call me Jamie?" I go, "Northern Ireland. That's just slang for like home homie." player, you know what I mean, we go, alright Jamie mate, what's happening Annie Lennox says walking on, walking on broken glass no it's not Annie Lennox from the Eurythmics Annie Lennox said, if you went and mastermind what would your specialist subject be Um, my specialist subject would be let me see, what do I know a lot about 
my sub my special subject would probably be something for bo- boringly it'd be something football related you know the premiership or something i don't know or or the life and work of um what do you call him? Versace? Two questions. One, one question left. Oh, no. It's just another Hey Jamie. No, it's not. Top three places to eat in Belfast from B. Morris. Uh, top pla- three places to eat in Belfast. These are not like the... I'm not talking like the Michelin star or whatever. The three places I like to eat are Nando's. Nando's Dublin Road. Not in any particular order. Nando's Dublin Road. Nando's Butcher Road, Nando's Victoria Square, I like my chicken, I like Nando's, somebody sent me an e-voucher recently, because they're like, I just joined the Patreon, missed some payments, which, by the way, I'm not going to foreclose on anyone's property, if you can support the Patreon, that's great, if you support the Patreon, then you're like, listen, I'm going to drop out of the Patreon, it's all good, but if you ever do that, you must reimburse me with chicken, because I love that, that was so great, um, but yeah, I just like my Nando's. Um, I want to plug one thing, which is the... I didn't drink any of this, by the way. What I want to plug is uh, merchandise. Shopify, in the description of this podcast, we post the links for the Shopify, which is where all the merch is. Uh, we got Sipper t-shirts, Money Toad t-shirts, mugs. The Keith Cruz t-shirt sold out. Um, but all the merch is there. And you can check it out on Shopify. Patreon.com slash T with me podcast. If you want to check that out, get yourself some extra stuffs you can do. Michael Foster.tv. He's the man behind the camera. Getting over coming down on the sugar on the sugar come down from that tray bake, still licking his lips like some sort of confectionery pervert. And it's all good. I'll get the tar mark off my head for next week's episode. Have a good weekend. Keep living the dream. Keep sipping. Peace out.